Hi guys, it's me Bumble and we are back at the Medieval Festival and we have got a real treat for you. We have got some knights fighting and they're called Kinyaz UK, is that correct? And this is their fearless leader. <laughs> Nice to meet you guys. Hiya. So what, what, what period do you actually... So it's, it's, uh, we're, we're portraying knights of around the 14th century. Yeah. Um, we fight full contact um, rather than the more controlled aspect of the reenactment. We fight for points um, or to ground our opponents. So how, how do the points work? So any good stout blow on the armoured areas of the opponent, um, as you can see, um, providing they get a good clean hit with the blade edge, they're good fir firm stout blow, and it's similar to how amateur boxing would be scored. Yeah. Every good clean hit wins. And I know I noticed when you, you, you took a lot of leg shots because they can't do anything because they can't stand, do they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a very large area that's very difficult to protect. Yeah. So that's where you tend to score most of your points. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've personally been doing this just shy of six years. Um, and a few of the guys you see here have been doing it less than six months, some up to a year. So uh, some fresh faces, but uh, eager and willing to fight. And the way you pick what they're going to fight with is normally you get someone to pick one of the... the yeah, for, for, the, for the demonstration we're doing here today, this is a bit of an interaction for the kids and the guests. Mm. But usually um, it's set out deliberately. You choose a category that you're going to fight in yeah. and that's what you... So what, what are your categories? So here we've got pole arms. So Hearted weapons with metal heads. Here we've got long swords, so two-handed sword. Here, sword and buckler, single sword with a small shield. This is what we call a, a bit of a free-for-all. Yeah. Uh, just go at it, hammer and tongs. Uh, yeah. And the last one, sword and shield. So what was the last one? You so the one you just saw was sword and shield. Yeah. And you guys haven't seen that yet, but you will be seeing it shortly. Um, right, I don't know your name. Pete. Pete. I'm Bumble. Bumble. <laughs> right. And um, these are these guys. Watch the video. We've got two fights coming up for you. Right guys, who do you think won that fight? I, th I think it was the red, personally, but it's up to you. Leave you in the comments below, okay? We'll be back with more action later. Cheers.
Hi guys, we're here at the Medieval Festival and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a chat with a guy, one of the most important people at one of these events is your blacksmith. And we've got one of the best in the country, we've got Mutton Chops Forge here just to talk to us. And there he is, his name's Carl, and he's actually making something now. Hi Carl, how are you Hello. doing? Afternoon, not bad, yourself? That, that, I'm really good, thank you. Um, so, what, what's the process you're doing now? Uh, so at the moment I am what we call forging, so I'm making um, items out of metal using yep. the forge to heat them up. So at the moment I'm actually working on a decorative piece, um, which is a snake. A snake? So there's some on the floor there. Oh, that's cool. And it's just to demonstrate some forging techniques um, that you make by hand. So it's taking just a raw bit of material and hitting it a lot and actually making it into a shape and making it into an item. And um, what are the bellows for? So the bellows, what they do is they pump oxygen or air into the fire. So these aren't just one set of bellows, they are two bellows. So when you look from the side, when I pull in this lever here, it actually moves this bottom leaf, oh, which see. then fills into the top leaf, and that's the one that actually blows into my fire. The one that blows into oh, that's it. Oh. Um, yeah, and that's, what, what do you call that coke? Yeah. So yeah, what I'm using here is coke. In medieval times they would do charcoal. But the problem with charcoal when you forge it, it causes a lot of sparks as you pull the work in and out. Mm. So that is a slight risk with sort of dead grass and grounds and people watching us and canvas. Yeah. So what we do is for safety reasons and yeah, it's actually easier to work because I use it in my own workshop, I use coke. Oh that's that's brilliant. And um, what what's the material you're using? The material you're using is called steel, or mild yeah. steel. Mild steel. Um, we actually call it black iron. So that's where we get our name blacksmiths from. Oh, so we actually right. use black iron, so that's why we call blacksmiths. Right, but well, what is the steel? British steel or...? Yeah, so this stuff is British steel. Um, we can get imported stuff, but it tends to, when you forge it, it's not as good a quality when working it. Um, but that's what I find anyway. That's because it's not British. It's not British. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what tools do you use? You've got the, the bellows, obviously. You've got the... So I've got the bellows. What I'm going to do is just pull this out of the fire so I don't burn yeah. it. I'll just pop it to the that's, side. What, so what are you doing as, as we're doing it? That's so we cool. have the bellows and we have the forge. So forge. we like to sort of use vast vocabulary. We work in a forge with a forge and we do forging. Right, okay, but that's not pound notes and stuff. <laughs> No, 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 that's not pound notes, unfortunately. Different type of forge. Yeah, I wouldn't want to put pound notes on there. So we have our forge, then we have our anvil, our yep. hammer, and our tongs. Oh. So what we actually start with is an anvil and a hammer. Mm. Once you've got those two items, you can pretty much make whatever you so need. So that's where the saying goes from, then. Going at it, hammer and tongs. Yep. Ah, there we go. We've learned something today, guys. So what are you what are you making as a snake? Can so you... I'm making a snake at the moment. So what I'll do is, I'm, as I was talking to you there, I just didn't want it to burn. Yeah, that's cool. So with coke and a set of bellows, it will just increase on temperature. Mm -hmm. So at the moment in this forge, you're looking at about 1200 to 1400 degrees Celsius, yeah. is where Crikey, the hottest that's point is. Really so what we do is we keep all the coke raked over the top, so don't want that heat escaping. Yeah. So we just maintain our our fire, and we bring the steel up to temperature. We just keep an eye on it, turn it how, back. How do you know where, when it's at temperature? What colour is it? So we're looking for a bright yellow, nearly white. Yeah. And you kind of get to learn how long it's been in there. Is that what they call like white hot? Yeah, white hot. White hot, yeah. So that's where it is. So the hotter it is, the easier it is for me to move. The problem is where we are now mm. is there's sun on my Atonville here. Mm. So what happens is as I bring the work out, I actually lose a lot of colour. Yeah. So you kind of have to learn as you go yeah. along when you're at that point and when you can current hit in it. So I'm going to bring it out now and what I'm going to do is draw the steel down so I'm making it into a, a long point. So bring it out. Oh, it's sparks coming off a bit, Carl. Just keep working it. So now the tip bit is getting to the point where I can't work it, so I move back to the bit that's hot. Just getting to the point where it's too cold now, so I look at just finishing up, and then we pop it back in the forge and heat it up again. Brilliant. And obviously that process goes on 
and on until you, you finish the completed article, which yes. is your snake. Yep, so we just keep forging it until it gets to the finished result. Um, you can overforge them, yeah, and that actually breaks the steel up. But it does take a long time to get to that point. But you, you also said something earlier when I was watching your display about, is it tempering it? Um, yeah, so when hardening you, and tempering. So yeah. a lot of people think you take the steel when it's this temperature and you just put it straight in the water. Yeah. But what it does, it does thermal shock on the steel and what it makes it do, it, it makes it go hard but brittle. Yeah. We don't really want that. So if that piece I was just making and I finish it off, I actually leave it on the side to cool down. Yeah. Until it gets to a black hot, but yeah. there's no colour in it, and I can quench it. Right. Hardening is when there's a higher carbon content in the steel. We can put it in the water and make it go really hard. Yeah. But we need to take some of that hardness out so it's not brittle. Yeah. And that's where we heat it up again Ooh. and you get tempering colours. And depending ah. on what we're wanting that item for, depends on what tempering colour we need. Ooh. So to give you an example, um, in my box here, I have a chisel. I've got one up here, so these are two different types of chisels. And you made those? So I made these. And what you do is you forge them down to the point, you sharpen them up, and you put them in the fire. You drop, or you place it into the water, moving it up and down so you don't have a stress point. Ooh. You cool that right down, so it's back to a cold temperature. Ooh. And then you put it in the fire in reverse. Oh. So you actually heat it up from the back forward. And that's when you get the tempering colours moving along. And this one, because I use it for cutting steel, I'm looking for a purple colour. Oh, so that's right. good for cutting hot steel. That's amazing, that's, that's really cool. Um, what's your favourite thing to make? Favourite thing to make? Uh, the thing I've made the most, I probably do enjoy, is these snakes. Um, snakes. I've made them since college. That's pushing 17 years now. Oh my goodness. Um, so I really enjoy doing them, because I do them a lot. People seem to enjoy them. Every one I make slightly different, so they each have their own little character. Um, but they're, they're probably my, my favourite thing to make. Yeah, and um, also you've got a maker's mark that you use, haven't you? I do. So generally blacksmiths, especially in medieval times, in medieval times they didn't actually read or write much. Mm. So what they did is they did a maker's mark, and you can see some of my maker's marks on my poles there that are holding the ropes. Yeah. They're just below the eye. And what that is, is my make, my <laughs> logo as such. Yeah. So it's an anvil on a stand. So I make my own punch, and I, what I do is I hit that into all my work. Oh, that's cool, that's brilliant. Well, we're, we're gonna um, leave you to get on and, yep. and finish off your, your snake. Thank um, you very much. The finished articles will be somewhere up here, or down there, or wherever, but he's gonna do that. So guys, um, I'd like to thank Carl, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very and much. We'll have a beer later, yeah? That sounds but good. You can find all the details for Carl. It's gonna be around here, but you'll, you'll see them, the Facebook details, everything, okay? So, um, thanks Carl, we'll see all you the soon. Best. take care.